In this video, we will be running through the creation of a Wildment structure, specifically this palette dispenser. Every Wildment starts with a sketch, and with more complex structures such as this, 3D sketches make Wildment creation simple. This structure will be built up from multiple sketches, the base conveyor, the upright cage, and the feet. Standard Wildment profiles can be downloaded from the SOLIDWORKS content section in the design library. You can also create your own custom profiles, but in this video we will be using the ISO standard. To start, we will select structural member and create the legs of the structure. We can either select parallel sketch lines or continuous sketch lines to build the structural member groups. Once selection is complete, I can click new group. This allows me to build up another group which may not be parallel or continue on from the initial selections. In this case, the cross supports. As I make these selections, SOLIDWORKS will automatically trim each corner and joint. This can be seen at the purple dots. Click the green tick to create the structural members. Next, I want to create larger rectangular beams. This must be done in a new structural member command, as I'm going to use a different profile, rectangle. I can now repeat the process for this. You'll notice that these members do not automatically trim against the legs. This is because they are part of a different command. I will clean these up later on. For now, I will adjust the location of the member using Locate Profile. We use point selection to make the change, allowing the member to sit on top of the legs. If you spot a mistake, modifying weldments is straightforward. In this instance, I have missed a leg. Simply edit the feature, select the group and add the line. I will now finish off the base. locating the profiles to make sure everything aligns. Again, we can see the ankled members are trimming to the horizontal beams with no user input required. Onto the final weldment structures. I will now select the parallel uprights. These can be put into three groups. I want to make sure the horizontal beams are perpendicular to these. To do this, I can use the alignment tool. This is especially useful when working with non-square designs, such as this. As I mentioned before, joints are automatically cut at each purple dot. You can manually alter these by selecting the dot and altering the trim order. Here, I want a mitre. The structure has now been created, but there are some final modifications and checks to be done. We can use the trim and extend tool for that cleanup operation. I will show you three examples. One, extending our 80 by 40 profile to line up correctly. Two, trimming our uprights to stop when they reach the base. Three, converting this corner into a mitre. I will now repeat this process for the rest of the model. This took me less than two minutes. Next, I'm going to add the feet using a standard boss extrude. I can then pattern this across to all legs using a sketch driven pattern. I need to make sure that I pattern the body, not the feature. Otherwise, the information will not feed into the cut list correctly. I will now add a color and the upright panels. You will notice that I have three cut list folders. These are non-weldment bodies. We can create a bounding box for each of these to automatically allocate a description which details the size of the panel required to produce the part. Next, some gussets and weld beads. Starting with the gussets, select two adjoining faces and this will automatically create a preview. Alter the settings to suit and repeat for each leg. Again, notice the cutlass folder. We can create a bounding box and even modify the name if necessary. Finally, 
a weld beam. This works using the same principle. Select two adjoining faces and the weld preview will be created. Change the settings to suit. The part is now complete. Let's quickly produce a drawing, drag in a view, and then add a weldment cut list, finishing with auto blue. For the cut lists, you can also add angle cut details if required, as this information is captured as you model. Modifications are easy. Changing a dimension will propagate to all features and related documents. Let's finish with one final change. Altering the weldment profile, and adding in some end caps. Again, all modifications will propagate to all features, cut lists, and referenced document. So to summarize, we have created the framework of our palette dispenser using the structural members library in SOLIDWORKS. We've applied corner treatments, both inside structural members command and outside using the trim and extend tool. We've applied some end caps and gussets to the model to strengthen and finalize it. And we've also incorporated some solid bodies. In our case, the feet and the uprights in the cage. All this information is passed through into the cut lists, which we then visualized in a drawing. Finally, we went back to the model and made a few changes to show how easy this is to do.